as y'all can see, today's episode is brought to you by DraftKings, baby. In particular, DraftKings Sportsbook, the leaders in the sportsbook realm, man. Not only are they safe, but they are secure and they are reliable. And for all of the first time people, when you first sign up for DraftKings and you use that promo code, Moats, as I pull it up for you right there. See what you get right there, man. Up to $1,000 in deposit bonus money. I mean, it's an awesome concept. Whatever you put in on your first, you know, bet once you sign up and you use that promo code Moats, if you put in $200, well, the good old people at DraftKings says, well, you know what? They use the promo code Moats. We like Moats a lot. We'll throw in another $200 as well. That simple, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah, but we do know, Deke, <clears throat> at times, Everybody can't handle gambling. It's unfortunate. At times, some people might be lacking in self-control. Some people might even have what you call a problem with gambling. Right. Well, you know what I have to tell those people? What's that? If you have a problem, (laughs) if your problem is with gambling, (laughs) you need to call 1-800-GAMBLER. Call 1-800-GAMBLER. You better call up on the phone. What if it's a crisis? Well, we got crisis canceling. If you need referral services or if you got that gambling problem, you better call 1-800-GAMBLER. Unfortunately, I feel like we got to talk about the linebackers, man. The inside guys. You saying both or just one? Mainly one, but I wanted to lump them in because it it just sounds nicer when you do it that way. (sighs) I ain't gonna lie, I kind of like what I saw from Joe, man. I think Joe is continuing to progress. Uh, Joe showed what I'm talking about. Led the team in tackles, him and Highsmith. Yeah, yeah, and and the only reason I don't get too caught up in the stats because you see who's third on the list in tackles as well, and it can give people a false sense of like, oh man, I do a ball out. Five tackles? I don't know if that's balling out. Well, but. no, no, no. Because on ESPN, they do just the total tackle. So, like, it has total tackles for Joe, 13. Total for Alex, 11. Total for Devin is eight. Five solo. Oh, they combine them yeah, together. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, you. when you look at it, it's like, oh, man, eight tackles, man. Dude, he, he was hoping out there, man. He did a thing. And it's like, ah, a little context. A little context. But, um. <clears throat> Can I ask you a question with both, then? Yeah, let's do it, man. Because there were this some plays. This more fun this way when you do a Q&A style. Well, <laughs> I know what everyone's saying. Bush sucks. Yeah. But I'd like to get your expert take on this because mm-hmm. I did see some nice plays from Bush, mm-hmm. especially in that second half. Some mm-hmm. nice tackles, even decent covers. Mm-hmm. The one coverage play that was bad, he was lined up on a receiver against mm-hmm. Amron St. Brown. Then you had the penalty too. But I saw some good things from Bush. What was what were the huge negatives? You think their little running streak for the end of that first half mm-hmm. and second half would – you would put the blame solely on him. You can't go solely on him, but I do think huge for part. Four, I think for four quarters he struggled to see and struggled to fit the run, just because I think the defense played better in the fourth and in overtime. He was playing better, but the guys around him were elevating as well. In There's some guys we got to shout out. In particular, out. Cam Hayward. In particular, Alex Highsmith. Um, definitely Trey Norwood. He was Loudermill, another guy. Dude. And a lot of them, yeah, though, like. To me, I think that was more of the difference. Like when I watch Devin right now, and this has been showing up on tape with him, it's just kind of one of those things of at what point do you say this is, you know, who this player is, or we keep justifying, keep having an excuse. It's the ACL, it's the ACL. Well, right now we're 13 months removed from the ACL injury. So how often or how much can we still use that? Early in the season, it was, well, he's young, right? That's what I told you, man. He hadn't played a lot. He has, I mean, he missed a lot of, you know, OTAs and stuff like that. But it's like he's starting every game. He's playing 90 plus percent of these snaps. We're at week, what, nine now? Week 10? That was 10. So at what point is he not young anymore? And I think that, <laughs> depending on who you are, because everybody's going to be a little different, I do think with that is going to determine how you view Devin. So, When you throw that in with the expectations of being the 10th overall pick and knowing that we traded up to get you there, I do think that people hold him to a lot higher of a standard and rightfully so. We're not going to, you know, balk at that. But the things that I still think he continues to struggle with is seeing where he needs to go, seeing plays like where where does he king? 
are you reading your triangle in terms of your two guards and your running back? When you have a fullback out there or a tight end that's off the ball, that's just like a fullback. They bring information. They tell you stuff. Are you seeing the right things? Pre-snap, what are you thinking in terms of, all right, I know it's three by one, as we've talked about, right? Should I cheat over? Okay, it's two by two, but it's a tilt here. It's something different. What is information giving me? At times, I ask myself, okay, is it not a lack of study habits, but are you not studying enough? And the reason I say that is from personal experiences, right? Think of it like this. We're prepared for a test, me and you. We're sitting in the same class, right? Your class is with your defensive coordinator. Your class is with your linebackers coach. They write it up on the board. They show you clips of it. They tell you, hey, write this down in your notes. We both do the exact same thing. You go home, you never pick it up again because you sat in the class, right? You heard the notes. You're ready. You got the lecture. You're good. You got the notes. I go home. I'm going to study over the notes. I'm going to come back and listen to the lecture again. I'm going to research on top of the notes I already had just to see, well, you know, what if it was this? What if it was that? And now when we get to the test, if there's any variations from what that teacher told me, I'm going to be prepared for it. Whereas for you, you might not be prepared for it. You might struggle with this. Even if you're a naturally gifted student, you still might be caught off guard by this. When I watch Devin, part of me feels like, man, are you just taking what they're saying in these meetings and that's it versus are you putting in that extra work? Because it's too many times now where you're making the same mistakes. We talked about going back door behind plays versus having to take a, a harder approach of going over top of blockers. Why is that significant in this defense? When you go back door and you don't make it, you not only cut off the guy that was supposed to be back door, but now your hole is there as well. So you essentially make it a two a, a two gap hole, which puts more pressure on me, puts more pressure on Edmonds, puts more pressure on the perimeter defenders as well. He does that too much. And if you're going back door and not making plays, you create a bind. Now, when we talk late in that fourth quarter, what was the difference? He stopped going back door all the time. Now, he still was getting swallowed up by the alignment. And that's the other part where you say, okay, I do feel like he waits a little bit when old linemen are coming up on him instead of initiating contact. And by him being a little bit late because of the vision, right? You're not seeing what you're supposed to see. So you're surprised. Now you feel like the only way I can get over there is to do what? I got to go around the block. I got to go back door. Hopefully I catch him. Well, now you just compound that, which you already broke down. So to me, when I watch Devin, that's what I continue to see. But then you can point to plays where he does do it right. And you're like, Devin, this is what we're talking about right here. This is what this is what you're capable of. You look good right here in coverage. You read this the right way. But it's so inconsistent right now that it's hard to praise him when you watch a tape. And it's like, bro, like this missed tackle, that's not that running back being better than you. I'm questioning your effort right here. That definitely doesn't need to pop up. Yeah. But everybody that watched the tape, you watch the same thing. I watch it's like, bro, okay, I can, okay, Mika, I can understand yours. Okay, Emma, I can understand yours. We, what is the justification for Devin on that? You know what I mean? Like, and those are some of the things when I watch him, and that's what I keep saying to myself. Like, at what point do we stop making excuses? And you got to have a tough conversation with them. I think that the team has started to do the soft conversation when they started to. All right, we're going to put Splane in there a little bit, you know, that whole game. But that still didn't light the fire under him to make him more consistent because we're still seeing the same things pop up over and over again now. So eventually they're going to have to say that this isn't acceptable and he elevates or they have to take him out that lineup for a little bit until he gets it together. But you can't have those type of performances or those type of plays consistently showing up on your tape because it's going to always overshadow you know, your couple of good plays. And that's the issue right now for him, man. We did that with like Taylor early in his career. Yeah. He looked like he was going to be pretty good for us, talented, but he was getting burned so much. We just had to like bench him for the rest of the one season, but then he came back and was the lockdown corner yeah. that he ended up being. So I wonder if that could potentially be a case with Bush. And also with Devin, I didn't feel like we saw this in the first six weeks of last season. I mm -hmm. thought he was really good in the run agree. game. His main concern was just coverage, coverage against some yeah. top tier tight ends that have some speed and we mm -hmm. saw that happen against uh amaron st brown there but yeah. eh, that's kind of a tough mismatch ultimately you do want to be in the right positions you do want to make yeah. the plays but i think you can give him a pass on that it's the these gashes in the running game yeah. that are unacceptable it really was at the end of the first half and the second half how they were able to run all over us and if you're saying Devin Bush and inside linebackers are a big part of that. It, it can't be the case anymore. Yeah, Because well, Goff was terrible. He was absolutely. inept. 
and, and the other thing is this, and like I said, the reason why I said it's not just on Devin, because at times the outside guys, they lost contain a little bit. And that's why some of those runs were able to hit the perimeter the way that they did going more downhill versus being more flat, right? When those guys on the perimeter in terms of, you know, TJ, uh, Alex, corners especially too and when it's their time to set the edge because in our defense multiple guys are going to be in those positions you want to make that ball go north i mean go east and west you don't want that thing going north and south especially on the curve like that because it puts everybody in a bind but at times that happens as well and that is highlighted though when we talked about like devin going back door because on i know on one of the longer running yeah, plays you can make up the for line, his job is to be over top of that blocker because now instead of that run being a 20 yard run it's right. a 10 yard run but because he goes back door, he essentially takes stuff out the play. Now, when everybody's looking for that extra line of defense, okay, this is the first group. It didn't work out. You're supposed to be the reinforcements. Where are you? You took yourself out the play by going back door. Those that that's when you feel even magnified. And normal like fans aren't going to see that. But watching no, I have it, no clue. right? But like watching it and understanding the defense and how it works, how layered it is, it's like, bro. That's that. That's what we call a secondary contain. You know, you're the first primary contain, but you're the second guy because you're getting over the top. And by you doing these things, you might think it doesn't hurt because they didn't run in my initial gap. But that's not your only assignment. And those are some of the things that it just it looks like he's a little too loose with the backdoor stuff. And it's no different. I mean, even Ryan Shazier dealt with this early in his career. Shay would go backdoor every single time. We'd be like, Shay, you're killing us. When you don't make the play, when you make it, it's great. Tackle philosophy, high five you, everybody goes nuts. But when you miss, when you get blocked, if you're a second late, the rest of us are killed. Like we got to do over and above you to like make perfect. up for it. Right. And with Devin, it's like he he hasn't had that switch flip just yet to understand like, all right, I'm hurting y'all a little bit more than I'm helping y'all. For every one of these that I make, the nine that I miss is killing y'all. Shade took him some time, but he figured it out, and that was the difference for him. And he also, his study habits changed. He went from being a guy that was studied to a guy that was like, I don't want to say obsessed, but like a football junkie. Cooking and you, up in the lab. Yeah, and you could see, like when you would watch him, you would see how pre-snap, okay, <clears throat> if I know this guard has a good angle on me, and one of my weaknesses is my strength at the point of attack, I don't want to stay back here in my traditional alignment because it's going to force me to backdoor this. By forcing me to backdoor this, that's going to hurt me. That's going to hurt this defense. So what did Shea do? Shea was, okay, I'm just going to cheat over. If I cheat over, I'm more than fast enough to get by this guy now. And I'm still going to be good on my side. Those are the things that when we're talking about Devin Bush. And his like you said, knowing the variation. He's going to have to progress, right? He, it's not just enough knowing your assignment. I can teach you the Steelers defense inside and out. You can know your assignment. But it's not just about knowing your assignment. It's also about knowing the strengths and weaknesses of the defense, strengths and weaknesses, the strength and weaknesses of each call. You don't play cover three the same way you're going to play cover four. You don't play cover four the same way you're going to play cover one. You got to understand that. You also got to know as the middle linebacker, because it's the quarterback of the defense. What are the guys in front of you doing? Do they have a game win? What do I mean by game? Well, not every, like we you think pass rush stunts when we say games, right? Well, you got games in the run game as well. It's like, same with blitzing. You got run blitzes, you got passing blitzes, right? Well, if you got a stunt in front of you, if you're Devin, you got to know, okay, this might be a situation where TJ is crashing down hard. Why stay over here with this guard when I know I'm going to need to be out here outside this tackling tight end? Cheat over half a step. Those are some of the things that we're talking about film study, just above the neck, thinking the game through. That, to me, is what Devin has been lacking because athletically, Man, the dude's healthy. You watch him, man. He doesn't look a step slow. His shuffle isn't altered. So all of the knee parts and the knee concerns, that on tape shows that that's not an issue. But to me, when I see him overrunning, when I see him taking bad angles in effort-related stuff, to me, that's a whole nother issue than the knee. So you get off that soapbox now. If you're the coach, what are you doing in terms of uh, playing time? Does anything change? <sighs> I mean, for me, partly, I would expand Spillane a little bit more just because I do feel like Spillane, like Spillane is limited compared to Devin, but Spillane is way more consistent. So as a coach, you take consistency over high-end talent because high-end talent is not consistent. How can I formulate a plan around you? I don't know if you're going to be front side. I don't know if you're going to be back side. I don't know if you're going to hit this thing thick. And it makes all of us have to second guess. And if we're all having to second guess... How can we play at the level that we need to versus NFL caliber players? So I would slightly just bump up Splains a little bit more with the full intention of it lighting a fire under Devin. 
because we all want Devin to be the guy. That's what happened. Though. Like, <laughs> but how much did Spillane play this game? I don't even think he played that much. <laughs> uh, not, if that I any. remember at I all. I can't yeah. remember. So partly that's my thing. Though I'm like, I just want to see him reach his potential. And at times, everybody's motivated differently. Some guys are motivated by money. Some guys are motivated by just being the starter. Some guys, they need to get motivated by feeling disrespected. Some guys, you got to take them out the lineup for a little bit and be like, look, man, I understand, you know, you you had your pedigree. I get all this, but the team is about to make a decision on you. Your fifth year option is coming up. That's a big decision that they're going to be making. And how many months? This is a part of that audition as well. And it's only so long that you can live off the he's young. Right. Because that goes out the window. And now it's, okay, are you worth with this fifth year option for an inside linebacker draft the 10th overall is going to be? And I don't think right now that the team is completely sold on that just yet. 